Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come at the appointed time together. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have here today? Well, a whole lot of nothing. A bag full of empty. As everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, uh, I've talked to a couple of the people that uh, I know uh, that trade on uh, in, in and around Chicago's uh, big uh, CBOE and other uh, trading floors. Uh, anyway, I've got a couple people that have never really uh, steered me wrong. It's not always exactly the truth, but it's, I mean, you know, unless they got somebody to admit something, you're probably not going to get 100 percent. But uh, they're all saying that everybody's afraid to do something because they think uh, that if the market starts dipping, that uh, the Fed and the Treasury and everybody else is uh kind of told everybody that, uh, you know, if you move it up, uh, we'll probably not do anything. If you move it down, um, we'll do something. So, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of the uh, gunslinger who was always uh, shooting at the feet of the uh, hapless drunk, telling him to dance. I wonder how many times that actually happened. I bet probably none. Anyway, uh, the whole thing of that is they're kind of shooting around at the feet of the market and they don't want it to go up and they don't want it to go down. Uh, so the question is, are they trying to kill volatility today and the next couple of days as the BOEs, uh, uh, you better get out of here by sundown, except the sundown was three days from uh, yesterday. Anyway, the uh, was don't you love my uh, Western uh, bad cowboy analogies today? Anyway, uh, get out of town by sundown because it's going to be a bad day at BlackRock, although probably they've already hedged themselves out. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those days where you just want to scratch your heads. Um, other things going on in the market are already in progress. <laughs> Black Bart market could be that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there could be some other stuff. Um, again, uh, we're going delta neutral today on uh, on options. Normally, you have a huge amount of uh, of volatility. I'm wondering if that wasn't really taken care of yesterday. That maybe uh, many in the industry already knew it, and that's why we got the wide swings yesterday. That uh, we, uh, part of the unwashed masses, uh, weren't uh, privy to. Uh, then we get into really earnings tomorrow and numbers. Uh, I think we've got numbers, uh, economic numbers tomorrow and Friday. So maybe was, this is just uh, the storm, uh, calm before the storm. Uh, but uh, I think we've got a lot of cross currents, and it's not easy to pick which one's out there. Uh, I did go uh, all flat yesterday uh, in the uh, daily newsletter. It's hard to really figure out if there's a, a real, from looking at options and then looking. The, the thing that really bugged me yesterday, reason I went all cash, is the, the VIX. Uh, puts went to nothing. I think they were in the low, like one out of five uh, VIX uh, puts, uh, VIX buys in an option was a put, like 20, 24 percent, something. It was very, very light. And the thing I hate about that is if no one's prepared for a big gap down, you can get a big gap down in the markets. So that part told me that the risk was much higher. Options continue to be rather bullish into the 21st. Now, it doesn't mean that you go up today on those. It just means that uh, kind of like Otis, uh, by midnight, he's going to find his way into the uh, uh, the drunk tank at Mayberry RFD. In the meantime, though, he can wander all over the town uh, and uh, maybe through a few bars. But at midnight, you know where he's going to be. And that's kind of the way that options work. 
uh, after they hedge them on a day like that or today. Uh, of course, uh, we talked about earnings, and that is a lot of the banks uh, Thursday and Friday. So tomorrow we're going to get some of them before the bell, and then Friday some of them before the bell. So I think we're going to start seeing at least – uh, these guys in the conference calls giving us some kinds of heads up at least what's happening in their business and why it probably won't help us today with an individual trade it will probably help us across the next week as more and more earnings do come out <laughs> uh, as uh, Jesse Livermore used to say uh, no prognosis no profit and right now, I don't have a real good prognosis, um, don't have a real good feel for a risk-reward other than I couldn't find uh, – I could find a lot of reasons to be thinking that market goes up from here, just not today. And we could also see a good uh, reason that the market gaps down, washes everybody out, and then takes back up uh, higher. So I have uh, no real um, – uh, iron in the fire on this right now. Uh, I'll have to look at f for some other tortured metaphors to finish up. But uh, I, I'm not real bearish. Nothing's changed on that other than the fact that I dislike the risk reward, uh, not what the rest of the market's saying. And I just very much dislike not having any uh, or a lot of people incredibly bearish at lows because generally they will wash everybody out and then the market turns back higher once everybody decides it's time to short. Uh, but, uh, yeah, very light uh, short sell uh, put numbers yesterday in the VIX stocks. And uh, if you're new to the show, we talk a lot about the VIX. I think it's probably one of the most un, uh, un uh, or dis or what would you say it misunderstood uh, vehicles in all of the market. Uh, it is just the premiums in the out of the money puts and calls for the S and P 500, and most people get very confused at it. Then they start looking um, at it and start getting into it, and then they find out that it's not only that. But it's a rolling average uh, or oscillator between two time frames, and that's uh, being 24 days and 36 days. So you get a little bit of uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a oral beat. Um, if you've ever been in a, a car, not a car, a boat with two engines or a plane with multiple engines, and you've heard that until the uh, – get both engines at the same speed that's kind of what you get in it and i think a lot of people are confused and don't really understand that the oscillator does do that between the 24 and 36 days so you know the whole idea is that's supposed to forecast over time not all the time be right uh the average of uh, uh of what uh, options should sell for uh, to cover the risk of higher and lower blowouts in the market. Um, if you haven't ever gotten it, um, email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll send you the white paper on the VIX from the CBOE. Uh, and it's well worth a read. The most misunderstood part of the market, in my opinion. We'll be back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Not much going up, but just kind of vacillating, very light volume right now. Uh, Thirty-five ninety-five on the S and P cash. So yeah, it's it's not an easy call here. Uh, I'm generally one if uh, you're in doubt, keep out. Uh, like I said, uh, on a uh, on a daily basis or a more of a trading basis, I've stood back. I've got one longer term position uh, that I get got into uh, correctly and so I'm sitting on my hands on that but uh, we got a lot of stuff going on in the market uh, Microsoft had its dog and pony with new products today didn't seem to do much of anything uh, new products look very cool uh, especially on the desktop it looks like Microsoft's outdoing uh, Apple uh, on high-end trick equipment um, for that. They also have a, a brand-new crop of, of uh, laptops, uh, and they've been doing very well. Um, they share pretty much all the technology uh, that they have with their partners who want to make PCs. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't think it's worth putting a huge amount of money in R&D so Microsoft does it and then shares it with its partners. But uh, for the most part, you got a big six-month advantage in buying uh, Microsoft's laptops right now over the competition because they do tend to come along slower. Uh, not always, not always better or worse. So there is uh, some reason to buy some of those other laptops out there. But uh, their new desktop thing looked very, very good and very expensive. Depends on whether or not you're buying the shares or you're buying the uh, desktop that they have. But it's uh, it's kind of like if you figured uh, Apple was going to make a desktop, this is what it looks like and all the features in it. So they're really directly going after that market that Apple has kind of, of uh, uh, ignored for a while, it's still ignoring. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want a workstation for... Uh, your office where you're doing CAD cam work or graphics work, um, 
Well, app, PC, actually, Microsoft pretty much has uh, the best off-the-floor um, products that you can buy now. Uh, again, Apple down on very light volume. We talked about this over the last couple of days. Not much going on out here. All quiet on the western front. 137. 68 the October 3rd low with 125 million shares today you got 46 million shares so you certainly aren't testing these lows on higher volume and uh, see I got uh, all quest uh, all quiet on the western front I have almost got all my uh, movie genre uh, metaphors in for the day but uh, we'll see I've got to add them up during the break okay questions uh, about uh, what's going on with uh, a few things. Uh, is September 29th the short-term top for the dollar? Uh, let's do this. Okay, let's go to Forex. Let's pick up the dollar. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. Well, I know, at least from what I've been told, and these people have been reliable in the past. There is a lot of uh, people, a lot of stuff going on in the background. And that part of the background is trying to make sure that the volatility dies as we wait for the BOE to go through. So I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to see, and it's not going to be something I know today. The question is whether or not we're going to see the market just kind of go sideways and burn off uh, whatever you believe either oversold or uh, overbought depending on how bearish you are in this market um, everything if I just step back if I'm not talking about the next day or two everything at least on a medium term uh, tells me that we've probably got some kind of low in here uh, that takes us uh, through to Christmas with maybe some kind of rally and then the next big leg would, would uh, move on um, so there's kind of that. Uh, look at the futures. Uh, what do we have here? Um, crude's down a little bit. Not exactly sure what's going on with that other than uh, we had a bunch of uh, oil come on the market rather suddenly. This is the uh, doubling up uh, before the election season uh, from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. My belief is the day after the elections, this is probably going to get shut off. And then we're probably going to see the real big move in crude after that. Of course, the uh, president of these United States has threatened the uh, head of the uh, kingdom. Is it the kingdom of Saudi? Kingdom of, yeah, it's the kingdom anyway uh, from the uh, Saudis. Uh, kind of uh, come out here and we're going to fight. Uh, kind of some fighting words. I'm not exactly sure what he thinks he's going to get by threatening uh, the ruler who uh, doesn't have to run for election ever. But uh, certainly, uh, I think uh, at least you could say that our traditional uh, allies – are probably getting uh, more distant, at least in the Middle East, both uh, Israel and the Saudis. Uh, at least in the last 20 years, Saudis have kind of been, maybe longer, 30 years, been kind of on our side since uh, a lot of the dust-ups out there in the sandbox, as the military likes to call it. Uh, so not exactly sure what's going on there. Uh, like I said, uh, I think we talked about it two weeks ago that the SPR was being doubled up uh, from 1 million barrels a day to 2 million barrels a day. And apparently that is starting to flood through the market. Uh, but uh, pretty much uh, that is thought to be turned off or will run out, whichever happens first, but probably somewhere around the election. And then we'll be looking at much higher prices. And I think uh, the Saudis uh, can look forward to that also. So they're probably nonplussed. I don't get to use that word enough. Nonplussed in the market about that. 877-927-6648. Okay. And see. Question on uh, Micron, which even coming out with bad news 
and uh, the uh, the SMH is doing horrible. Um, even coming out with bad news on earnings is holding up fairly well. You don't have a lot of volume today. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just looking through some emails here. Okay. Yep, we'll be back in a minute. Anyway, Micron, let's go and look at the SMHs when we come back. But very interesting to see this. I always look at this one as the ball bearings of the... Uh, semiconductor market because uh, everywhere you go you got to have memory no matter what you're doing these days we'll be back in a minute if you want to take advantage of this sector now is the time to subscribe to my gold report the gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold which is the currency and bond markets New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, DXAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we said, we're looking at the SMH. It's kind of interesting to see. Uh, Micron hold up so well and everybody going after the SMHs out here. Um, you got a doji out here, so I think we're probably looking at one of two things. Uh, of course, uh, Yogi Berra was famous for saying, uh, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Well, dojis, uh, if we get this light volume doji, uh, tend to be either the bottom or the halfway down move. So maybe we get uh, that determination the next day or two. We start heading down lower, then you can make a good prediction of uh, what? Uh, that's uh, about 30 buck move. Uh, is that right? Uh, 25? Yeah, 30 buck move in the SMHs. Uh, so we do we bounce back up to maybe 195 ish where that gap down happened, uh, or uh, do we subtract 30 from? 
174 and look at 144 uh, as the next move down in the SMHs. Again, I don't see why everybody's so bearish other uh, than getting invaded. Maybe I haven't uh, heard the news, but maybe there's more evidence that China is going to decide to big, big foot it into Taiwan. Uh, not sure. Um, Micron, maybe why it's holding up better, has very low, uh, uh, very low uh, exposure uh, to being in there. And I wonder if you won't see uh, non-Taiwanese companies and non-China companies both uh, do better um, if anything like that happens. Maybe they don't have to go all the way. Maybe they just continue to um, kind of saber rattle or something like that. But uh, interesting, we we are proverbially uh, in the uh, Yogi Berra phrase at the fork for the SMHs if we get this doji by the end of the day. Sometimes you get two dojis, but generally that is either bottom or the halfway move down. So probably tomorrow we'll have a much better read on that. Uh, questions on the TLT from Jack. Uh, thanks, Jack, for being a new uh, listener. Come on. Uh, as we said, this uh, got pushed down on the day when the bond market was actually closed. You had a doji yesterday. Now you're getting a little bit of a push back up. Uh, the question is, this one gets a lot of dojis, so I'm going to discount it as much as I would on something like the SMHs. Uh, but uh, certainly, yeah, you got a little move, no volume out here. Um, I've been thinking this thing's going to bounce to 104, 105-ish, maybe as high as 106, uh, and then make its next move down. I haven't seen any reason for all the wheels just to fall off the wagon. Uh, again, uh, the business of the Fed is to slow down big markets. I know Janet Yellen was out yesterday saying uh, everything is orderly. Well, it doesn't really matter if you're starving. This means that you're not going to die for and probably until next week if everything's going to hell in a handbasket. But for some reason, they're consumed with orderly when everything's going to hell. Um, whether you go broke today or in five days, would that really matter to you? doesn't really matter to me. If you're going broke, you're going broke. Um, but uh, to them, it's all about slowing everything down. And the idea is to keep it from breaking and then uh, totally kind of spinning out of control, uh, which is really what they're worried about. So could we see a Fed? I think we start, in the, at least let me put it this way, I think I start to see a lot of people betting that something's going to happen. Uh, that the Fed will step in. Uh, the problem I have with that is in the past, the Fed has not stepped in until everything uh, proverbially has hit that spinning fan uh, that blows air. And, of course, we all know what hits the fan. Uh, but generally, they like to uh, watch uh, people roast for a few days before they stamp, uh, they put their uh, uh, big foot in and their big foot out and shake it all about. There's another good metaphor. So uh, I'm kind of like uh, somebody just said in the den, uh, no position is a position. Uh, so we'll continue to take a look about what's going on in the broader markets. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the usual suspects uh, in VDA. Of course, NVIDIA, NVIDIA is shipping their new flagship product. You got two Jojis back to back on NVIDIA today. Today is going to be significantly lighter volume. So, is this the halfway move down? Or is this going to bounce back up to maybe 128 ish, where this thing gapped down on the 7th? That was on 67 million shares. So, hard to tell. Again, I'll probably react. I'm not going to do a lot of forecasting. It really, I mean, options have held up fairly well. Most of the option market makers think this market's going to turn around in the next seven days. This doesn't have to be today. Now, let me put it that way. Okay, so we looked at NVIDIA, just two dojis there. Let's take a look at uh, AMD. 
all these companies right now are having their big shipping uh, forays uh, and products coming to market. Uh, older products, probably the best time to buy a, uh, a last generation PC or last generation video card. There's lots of deals. Uh, my guess is that you're probably going to get the best price in about another two weeks after everything starts to ship. Wouldn't quite call it a doji and AMD, but certainly very narrow ranges here for the next three days, or for the last three days. Let me put it that way. Let's take a look at some of the streamers. Uh, I've been fairly bearish on these. Uh, yesterday you had a lot of volume down. You did break the previous low in Netflix. You did so uh, to, to, to on the low of September 6th. That had 7.5 million shares, 214.69. Uh, you got to 2.1264 uh, on higher volume. So you're probably going to come back and retest that low yesterday. You got a little bit of a reversal today on 10 million shares. Uh, so not a lot of volume so far. Uh, energy is about the same on the way up as on the way down. Let's look at one of the other more pure plays on streaming in Disney. Come on, Mr. Volume. There we go. Okay. So Disney looks a little bit better. You had a little lighter volume off the top. Of 126.48, that was the August 16th high. Uh, you're really testing this $90 and 23 cent low uh, in this market. I would want to see uh, $90 and 23 cents pierced, go below it, and then close back above it. Maybe it'll be a day, maybe it'll be two days, maybe it'll be the same day. Uh, certainly, don't have any volume as you've gotten down into that candle today. You only have uh, 3.7 million shares into 12. So, like I said, a lot of these look like they're going to get a bounce um, on volume. Uh, the question is just how long do we wait for the, B, uh, the second BOE shoe to drop before everybody figures it out? Uh, question uh, from Jack on IBB, which we'll get to here. Otis. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we uh, get ready for the home stretch here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what do we have in Majestic Silver? Uh, got a nice trading range, uh, high volume high, so you're probably going to retest 903. My guess is that, like uh, 1980, 81, uh, 2000, 2001, when the party's over and you start seeing interest rates hike, you really, like in the late 70s, you didn't really get the move in gold until everything kind of went along for a, a while and as soon as any pause came along everybody started going after gold uh, uh, hook line and sinker uh, I think the same thing's going to happen if I was uh, looking to go long gold or silver uh, anywhere in here if the Fed blinks that's what I would be over because that's generally when the the uh, you know you got kind of a big pool of gasoline out here for inflation. Everybody's ignoring gold, but it seems like it gets ignored until kind of the end of the hiking, and you start actually bringing the interest rates down or stopping uh, them rise. That's generally where you start in the long, long term. See the big moves that we've had during my lifetime. Maybe there's something more to some of the other ones. But uh, if we're looking for that 10-year run that you got from 2001 to 2009 or uh, 1980 to uh, 1987, I think it was, those all kind of came on the back end. I mean, we had inflation, gas prices, and everything was horrible. And really when things started to turn around and go back up is when gold really started to move. So, yeah. Eh, one thing to consider. Okay. Okay. What else do we have here? Got some more emails. Okay. What do we have here? Okay. My thoughts. All I have is my thoughts. Oh, there it is. Uh, Rig. Uh, any chance uh, that this does well? Well, you certainly bounced off the lows. The problem you had with this is you got uh, the same volume at the low for rig. The July 15th low had 35 million shares. Uh, the September 23rd low had 25 million shares. Uh, I, you know, the question is, are we going to have a change in policy in the United States? Probably not. We're seeing the first... Uh, steps of change in the UK my guess after everybody freezes to death maybe after a million people die uh, for an energy policy that didn't make a lot of sense maybe everybody's going to be more on the ball of saying well you know we this is where we're going with all this renewable stuff but you know that's not going to be five years it's probably going to take 30 so why don't we have something that makes a little bit more sense and uh, we need some energy now. 
uh, I know that's tough in some places, but I have a feeling that all it's going to take is a lot of bodies. Generally, whether it's in aviation or you have a crash and you've got, uh, they call it tombstone mentality in the aviation business. That is, you get enough tombstones, something actually changes. Uh, certainly in Europe, uh, and probably just the cost here in the United States uh, that we're going to see, we'll probably have enough tombstone to probably, I think, at least modify somewhat. Uh, the energy policy for fossil fuels here in the United States. So is there, uh, John says uh, he's uh, in at 508 since last year. Um, I don't know what your plan was. Um, I don't think they're going out of business. Long term, probably okay. Short term, uh, you know, I'm not one to ride one down. But, uh, meh. Could do okay, but uh, you know I, I would wait and see. Uh, since you've held it this long, I'd wait and see after the elections. Um, you know, if uh, lightning strikes and there's a giant blowout, um, you might just see enough people get together in the House and the Senate to override uh, the presidential vetoes. I know that's gonna. It sounds kind of tough now, but uh, weirder things have happened. And uh, like I said, uh, get enough tombstones, things can change. 877-927-6648. We're looking at uh, the 3D printer business. Now, this is a business that should uh, be doing better than it is right now. Uh, I think the next big uh, wave in 3D printer is coming with the drop in prices of printers that just aren't glorified hot glue guns which is kind of what we have now, uh, the prices are rapidly draw, uh, dropping on metal-centered uh, printers. These uh, take uh, basically metal filings and a laser and some glue and heat these things up uh, solidly enough uh, to take out and put in your easy-bake oven. And then you uh, run the temperature up to 1,000 degrees, and they kind of all uh, kind of uh, bake in the part. But uh, uh, are they as strong as uh, one that's CNC'd or uh, cast or forged? No. But are they good enough for a finished part for a lot of things? The answer is yes. I think that transition to metal is being is getting ready to do some stuff. And both SSYS, DDD, kind of the leaders in this uh, space have done something. You only have about 581,000 shares today compared to uh, 1.7 million shares back on September 23rd. You haven't quite gone down and test the low yet. Uh, you got 810 today. What was the low of the day? Uh, 925. I mean, you're pretty close. Yesterday, the low was 9 or 794. I mean, you're into that candle, uh, and you had no volume really to speak of yesterday, 1.2 compared to the 1.7. You got even lighter volume out here. So if the market started moving up, the problem that these light dollar or low dollar stocks have, though, is uh, the same problem uh, that we have uh, with CCJ. They, be, uh, they took a gap down on buying Westinghouse. Um, and probably a good medium and long-term decision for them. In the short term, the market doesn't want you spending any money on anything. They don't want you to be in trouble in a year from now uh, thinking that you've got to go out and borrow some money. But I think Cameco is doing a very good job now of consolidating the uranium and uh, nuclear uh, power production part of the business um, just a lot of people uh, are worried that everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Are you going to have money next year? So they don't want people spending a dime on anything. And uh, I think it's probably a good long-term buy. Uh, I'm not going to buy it today. But when the dust settles, I think probably they're going to be a much better company long-term. We'll be back in a minute.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get ready to uh, wrap up uh, another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour, uh, we'll take a quick look at volumes. Again, pretty light uh, going into the 3 o'clock hour. Um, 6.9 billion shares on the CBOE. Uh, so we're probably going to be light. It'd be tough to get to 10 billion shares today. Again, you probably want some level of uh, 16, 18 billion shares to blow out these lows. Maybe we're just slowly chewing through these lows and going to wake up and it's going to jump, uh, the, uh, break through ice, as uh, Wyckoff used to say. Uh, I just don't see a lot of evidence that generally you get more volume at the lows when you're chewing through it. Um, does this mean we're setting up some kind of rally that maybe the Fed's out there telling people they're going to, they're saying one thing, but uh, getting ready to do another? Um, hard to say. But uh, like I said, we got a lot of dojis out there today, probably the halfway move down or uh, a uh, time for the rally to start moving here in the next day or so. So uh, we'll have uh, more economic news tomorrow. We've got earnings. My guess is we're not going to get a lot of people uh, wanting to uh, get out past the tips of their ski before the close today. Uh, and that uh, sets us up for probably a, a, maybe a good Friday afternoon of either uh, a nice bounce or the end of the world sell-off.
both of those both of those have nice and probably equal for me equal uh, uh, probability of outcome sitting here now. So there isn't a good risk reward one way or the other. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, as usual, almost always better being out and wishing you were you're in than being in and wishing you were out of the market. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.